Okay. All right. So let's see if we can go back. Yeah. So here's the question that I'm asking you. Seems to be a circle on the screen for some reason. So the question I'm asking you is, if this strip center has five units and each is paying $500 per month, the total annual expenses are $10,000 and the appraiser knows the cap rate is 8%, remember, you will, don't know how to figure this, so it will be given to you. I'm asking you, what is the value of this property? So, go. What is the value of this property? The first thing you would need to understand is with cap rates, I have to use the NOI. All right. So how do I get to the net operating income? That is the gross income minus the expenses. So what's the gross income? Five units times $500 per month times 12 months, remember, is, if I've done my math right, $30,000. That is the gross operating income. But I need the net. How do I get to the net operating income? I subtract the expenses that I told you were $10,000 on an annual basis. So you end up with $20,000 in net operating income. I don't know how I got 20 like that. Now, value is net divided by cap. So you take $20,000, divide that by 8%, which is what? 0 0.08. And that gives you, I guess I need to do the math. 250,000. Is that right? That's what I got. I love algebra. <laughs> so the value is equal to 250,000. Exactly. That's how the appraiser. Notice how that math fa actually fairly simple. I can do algebra. It's getting all those numbers that typically have to be the hard part for the appraiser. They have to ask for the tax returns. They have to ask, know what that 8% market is, which you won't need to know on the exam. It's literally what our math professor used to call a plug and chug. The key is annual basis. You need the gross rent. You subtract the expenses because the key portion is cap rates work on NOI. Cap rates work on NOI. Are we good? Do we need to know another one? So that is one way. Typically, cap rates are used for strip centers and office buildings. Strip centers and office buildings. Okay? If you are going to use residential properties, and I mean big numbers, not like a, a single family home rental or a duplex typically. I'm talking multiple units. There are, is a second way to do this. 
Uh, where are we at? That is called the gross income method. And the gross income method, there are two of them. There is this thing called a gross rent multiplier, which only uses rental income. Now, this is probably the most hotly contested section, even amongst appraisals. So I'm going to tell you the method on how we use this in Indiana. The gross rent multiplier literally is a number like 15. Now, I cannot define what 15 means to you. All I can tell you is 25 is a bigger value than 15. I don't know what 25 means compared to 15. I don't know if 25 means it's got a golf course and 15 doesn't or 16 or 106. All I can tell you is obviously 15 is less than 25. So 25 would be a better number. I don't know what they mean. So don't worry about that. But it literally is as easy as I just told you. That property a minute ago had $30,000 gross income. Now, the key to this is that it is gross income before. Remember, we used net income. Now we are using gross income. And you would literally take it times the multiplier, 30,000 times 15, the value of this property is $450,000. It's literally that simple. Once again, you will not be asked to derive the gross rent multiplier or the GRM. It will be given to you. And the key is it's gross, where the cap rate used NOI. Any questions? Thumbs up. Now, there is a second one, and here's where the con contestation comes from. There's this thing called a gross income multiplier. Because remember, some properties generate other income besides just rent. On the gross rental multiplier, you only multiply the rental income. On the gross income multiplier, it would take into account other sources of income, like the laundry machines that when the Coke machine and we rented out the clubhouse and we sold pool passes. So in this example, if we said a gross income multiplier of 15, but now we have to look at all of the income. So 30,000 was the rent, but we made five grand in pool passes and we made two grand in Coke machine, our total income is 37,000. Now, you take 37 times 15, and what do you get? Another 90 grand onto that? 540,000 is the value. I hope I did that math right. Seven times 15 is 95 grand. 550. Five, isn't it? Did I do something wrong? Uh, no, you're probably right. Times the 15. Seven times 15 is 105. 105 into 450. It'd be right. 555. Is that what you got, Shauna? Yes. So see how the added income adds value. Now, I'm not even going to explain the other way 
that some people do. And trust me, if you Google gross rent multiplier versus gross income multiplier, you are going to see people do it two different ways. And there is an argument between these two. I'm telling you for our tests, the income, gross income, takes into consideration all of the income on an annual basis. Gross rent multiplier takes in all of the rental only income on an annual basis. All right. So what you now have is a cap rate, which uses NOI. You have a gross rental multiplier and a gross income multiplier. Gross rent multiplier, sorry. These are typically used for residential apartments. Apartments. <laughs> residential apartments. All right. This is the income method. So what you now have seen is we technically have three different ways to do this property or this is through the rental method or the gross rent method. And we have the sales comparison approach and a cost approach. And remember at the beginning, I told you that the appraiser is actually going to do all three of these. Well, I actually lied to you because what he's going to do when he does all three of these, he is going to do this thing called reconciliation. Reconciliation, well, let's back up and let's talk about all three of them at first. Reconciliation is where he does all three. And in my example, you can see that the appraiser has done all three properties, all three methods. Under the sales comparison approach, he found the value of this property using the comps was 100 grand. He did the cost approach and he determined the value would be 120 grand. And then he used the income approach and he came up with a value of 150,000. That's his three values. But what he will do at the end of this, and this is where I told you he would do them all. Typically, they do this thing called reconciliation. That's this section right there. Reconciliation is where he will weight the properties. He will judge them based on their highest and best use, which one is most likely to happen. So using those properties on 31 that we talked about a minute ago that look like houses, but are truly office buildings, he would go through and say, oh, okay, well, the odds that it's going to be sold as a house is probably 20%. The odds that it's going to be a new build is zero because there are no lots in there. But it's an 80% chance that it's prob probably going to be sold as a business. So therefore it's 80%. Then what you'll notice he does is take the value for each one times the percentage and then does it again, and then does it again, and he adds those three up, and that would be the value of the property that he just appraised. Now, there is no math on this test to how you do that, but what I want you to understand is that reconciliation deals with weighting the properties. What is the percentage chance? of each one of those three being used. And that is how they come up with the value. They will do all three methods and then they will give them a probability based upon the property itself. Now, a smart appraiser would have looked at this particular example I've got on the screen 
and probably not even done the cost approach.